faith meet, uh, miracles happen where expectancy and faith intersect, uh, needs are met, lives are changed, and situations are given over to the Lord, and things begin to happen that are written about. The book of Acts took place where they went expecting, where faith and expectancy intersected. The worlds were changed, people's lives, and that's what's here today. I know there are lives here today that are expecting God to do something. We all have a gift of faith. Exercise your faith in worship today and expect God. Expect God to answer what you have need of. He has the ability to do all things. Uh, he spoke the worlds into existence. Uh, but do you expect him to do what you need? Not what they need, but what you need today. Do you expect him? to do what you need today. I expect him to answer my prayer. I expect him to hear my prayer. But first, uh, I must give him worship. Uh, I must give him praise. Uh, let's worship the Lord with them as they sing. We invite you to the front. in your name calling out to you your glory like a fire awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth you're the reason we're here you're the reason we're
crashing waves All my world is washing out to sea I'm hidden safe in the God who never moves Holding fast to the promise of the truth That you're holding tighter still to me And the rock won't move and his word is strong Strong. The rock won't move and 
Hallelujah. That's it. There's one here who is higher than your situation today. He's higher than your sickness. He's higher than the guilt and shame you may have carried with you in this house. He's higher than anything you're facing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm reminded this morning of the words of David. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the cover of your wings, Selah. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You've given me the heritage of those that fear your name. We've sung about the name of Jesus this morning. This is what will happen. You will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations, and he shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. Because of that, so will I sing praises unto your name forever. It's the name of the Lord Jesus. It's the name that joins us in covenant with Almighty God. It's the name of the Lord that at the mention of that name, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. One day there's not a human being that will have the option. There's one day every knee will bow. Even the most, the dirtiest, filthiest, most vile sinner will have to bow. Every terrorist will have to bow. Every atheist will have to drop to a knee and declare that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I'm happy to be here today amongst the people who won't wait until we have to be, until we're compelled. We're not going to wait until we have to. We are willingly choosing God to reverence your presence and to worship the name of Jesus above all. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Can we give that name a hand clap of praise today? Can we give that name a shout? Hallelujah. Oh, your name is the highest power. Your name is the highest power. Even the demons know your name and tremble at its mention. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to call on that name on behalf of those who are sick in body today. So good to see Brother Larry Ganey here at the front worshiping the Lord. He gave us a scare this week with a little heart attack, a mild heart attack if there is such a thing, but he said, God ain't through with me yet. It's going to take a lot more than that to keep me out of the house of God and to keep me from pursuing God's will for my life. Could have been a lot worse, but Brother Larry, I talked to him this morning. He said, God has it under control. He said, God had all things, had his hand on me in all things. Nothing to worry about. But we've got some needs in the house today. If you're sick in body and you would like the ministry team to lay hands on you, please come up to the front in the center. We will be more than happy to pray with you and join with you in faith and believing that God will touch your body today. But we want to lift Sister Gwen Dossie up to the Lord, to Barbara Mueller, Julie Reeves, Ashlyn Mullinax, Edith King, and Patrick Ford this morning and those who are coming forward. So if you will, would you stretch forth your hands? Let's lift these needs up to God right now. Lord, you see the needs, you see the situations. In the name of the Lord That's it. There's no need to rush through this portion of the service. You can get a miracle right now wherever you're standing, wherever the situation is, whatever you need from the Lord. I believe God is healing these people on the, on the screen. I believe he's touching our elder sister Gwen right now. I believe those who have called the church office and said, please pray for me. Please put my name on the prayer list. God, I pray you answer that desperation right now. 
I pray that you show yourself mighty in the hospital rooms represented by these needs. Lord, show yourself mighty. Dispatch your ministering angels from this body of believers right now, from this prayer meeting right now, into their behalf, into their rooms right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God, for your glory, to God be the glory. Let's give him another hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome, awesome time to be in the house of the Lord. What a great day to be a part of the kingdom of God and to worship in the house of the Lord. Why don't you reach around, shake someone's hand, hug a brother or sister's neck, tell them you're glad to see them in the house of God today. Ask them how their week was, and if it, if it wasn't good, tell them it's going to get better starting today. And if it was good, tell them thank God for a good week. Tell them you're going to have another good week coming up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To all of our first time guests, we thank you for being here. We welcome you to the Pentecostals of Lee Road. You have honored us with your presence today. And if you are here as a first time guest, uh, we welcome you and we would ask you that on your bulletin, on the copy of your bulletin that uh, you should have received when you walked in today, at the bottom you'll see a guest card. Please feel free to tear that out, tear, fill that out and tear that off and place that in the, either in the offering basket or if you would prefer to turn it into the information booth in the foyer. We would love to have your contact information. We will not bombard you. We will let you know of what's going on here at the POLR. There's also a touch point card there. Please feel free to tear that off and keep that with you. It has our service times and all of some, uh, the contact information for our church on there for you for your reference. There's a lot of awesome things happening here at the POLR and we want you to know about every one of them. Everything that's going on we want you to know about. One of the, the big highlights of our year is coming up in a couple of weeks. Friday, July 21st at 7 p.m. will be our Kids Crusade 2017. Let's give our children's ministry, our youth ministry, all of those who are involved. This is one of those large events that is pretty all-consuming from uh, every campus uh, here on the, or every building on this campus and everything that takes place. Every ministry is represented in the week of Equip Camp and Kids Crusade. So please make note of that. Friday, July 21st at 7 p.m. Adult admission will be $5, and it will be the best $5 you will have spent probably since last year. Uh, last year's Kids Crusade. Kids are free. Of course, promotional cards are on the altar today. Um, somewhere, I think. They're supposed to be. If I don't see them, maybe they're hi hidden behind the, the bushes there. Uh, if you don't see them up here, they'll be in the foyer. You can pick some of those up. Uh, May the Lord be with you is the theme this year. Doors will open at 6. And please, they're, they're just a friendly, courteous reminder, there will be no... no uh, saving of seats, that creates all kinds of issues and, and trouble. But please get here early if you want to make sure you have a, a good seat. Our FIT team, that's our first impressions team, will be seating everyone as they arrive. Uh, we cannot seat you until your entire party is here, to be fair to those who are arriving early to get a, a good seat. So thank you for understanding, and uh, thank you for uh, abiding by those those guidelines, it just helps everything flow and makes everything run more smoothly, and we want all of our guests to be accommodated. Amen. We are so honored and privileged to have Reverend Greg Albritton back here with us this week. What a tremendous, tremendous blessing he has been to our church during this season, and it is uh, just an honor to call him a friend and to, to have him with us during this season. He has been a tremendous blessing, and because of that, uh, because we are going to honor and take care of the man of God, we're taking a special offering for Brother All Britain uh, to support him and his ministry. If you were prepared to give that today, Pastor mentioned this last week, if you are prepared to give that today, please place it in an offering envelope and mark it for the evangelist or for Brother All Britain. Just make a note somewhere on there that it is designated for him, and we will make sure that is taken care of. Or if you... Uh, don't, or not prepared for that today, feel free to bring that tomorrow night or even next weekend. But we want to make sure that we are taking care of the man of God and we are blessed because of that. 
as we prepare for our tithing and offering. It was about a year ago in the province of Ontario, Canada, that a 23-year-old woman was driving her bright red Toyota Yaris into town, and because that territory was new to her, she was dutifully following her GPS system. She was paying so much attention to the voice of the navigator on her GPS and blindly following his orders that she didn't realize she was headed right for the Georgian Bay. And she ended up driving down a boat launch and straight into the frigid water, following the voice of the GPS the whole time. Thankfully, she managed to escape the vehicle and swim to shore with a story to tell. The point is, as a 2008 study out of Japan confirmed, that people who use a GPS system to navigate a city develop a shakier grasp on the terrain than those who consult a paper map or those who learn the route through direct experience. Now, there are a lot of voices out there telling us what we need to do with our money, invest in this, buy that, here and there. But there's a paper map I present to you today that is more reliable than any other voice that we could hear in the face of this earth. This won't ever get hacked. This won't ever malfunction. This won't ever need to recalculate. This book says I've been young and now I'm old, yet have I never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. This paper map says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things will be added unto you. This map says bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse and prove me. And I'm thankful this morning to be counted among a people who are faithful and who faithfully apply the word of God. And we are so blessed because of it. I would remind you of the testimony our pastor gave last week about paying off the audio video mortgage and, and just an incredible thing, incredible times. And it's because we join together every week faithfully returning to God what is His and returning to Him that which He has given to us as a conduit. It flows through us. So if you would stand at this time. If you have your offering, would you take it out and just hold it up to the Lord? God, we commit this day to you and we commit this offering to you. Lord, you've put it in our hands and God, we release it back into your hands. For Lord, you can break it and multiply it and disperse it better than we ever could. You can invest it, Lord. Investing it in you is a better investment than anything else. And we thank you for the honor and privilege it is to give. And I pray you bless this offering for your glory. And bless your people who give today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would march from the back to the front and bring your offering, God bless you. Greg, would you prepare to come? Can we stand once again to honor the man of God? The prophet Joel. The prophet Joel declared this. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children. Let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage a reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore, they should say among the people, Where is their God? Now that passage of Scripture indicates that every one of us here today, from the youngest to the oldest, have a responsibility for this service today. And I can assure you, I can assure you with 100% accuracy and credibility that Brother Greg Albritton has prepared himself for this time, for a moment such as this.
to step behind this pulpit with a divine word from God. So I would ask today that we welcome him and Brother Greg, come and take your liberty. Speak to us what thus saith the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give that ovation. Let's give that praise. Your hand clap if you want to join it with a shout. Hallelujah, Lord, we praise you, Jesus. That's it, just an ovation of praise. Let a shout, a cry of praise come from your lips. Let something come from our heart. Jesus is in this house. Hallelujah, Jesus, we honor you, Lord. We praise your name, Jesus. God is on the throne, high and lifted up. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to Sunday morning worship celebration, Pentecostals of Lee Road Community. What a beautiful crowd and congregation here today. Believe that God wants to bless in every section. Believe that God wants to minister in every home unit represented. Amen. Every family, every single adult, every young person. I believe, how many of you believe God can have direct ministry to every single person in this room? Every home unit represented in this building. I believe it in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Such a tremendous honor to be back with you all. Um, last week, Brother Osborne was with you, and I've heard tremendous reports of a great Sunday. We were in Lake Charles and had a tremendous, tremendous time as well. And to be back with you is just an honor to be back with Pastor and Sister Trentacos, to be in service live today with Brother Rick and Sister Donna Marcelli. Such a tremendous honor seeing them in the house of the Lord. Amen. Such great people of God. Love you. Hallelujah. His presence is here. I want to get right into the word. And God in the way that he does things affirmed just a few moments ago that I'm right in the middle of the will of God. He uses many different channels to do that. But a few moments ago, Pastor Marty in exhorting had no idea what I've already put on computer Started to say on paper, but this is not paper in front of me. This is electronic equipment from computer to iPad that I felt the Lord has for us to minister. But he began to say he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords when he exhorted. And he said, and I'm not waiting until some later time. I'm going to give my heart and life and worship to him now. I, I hurried up and turned on my iPad and went to Sister Lacey. And I said, I just want you to see this was already in there. Before he said that, the Lord affirms to us, amen, the channel of the Holy Ghost. Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. Believing for a move of God in this house. Believing for your life to be touched. And I would like for you to affirm and confirm with me that you open your spirit for God to move in your life before we leave this room. Amen. Would you do that? Just affirm. Amen. Raise a hand. Say yes. Amen. Something. But you're going to open your spirit. Yes, oh, hallelujah. God's going to do something great. Revelation 17, verse 14. And after I read my text, could we just leave this on the screen for a few moments? These shall make war with the Lamb. Now, we're pulling a verse from the book of Revelation. I'm not going to try to explain the entire context. I want to pull from this verse. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. The lamb, the lamb is the Lord of lords and the king of kings. Our subject for today is simply this. He is Lord. Amen. Lord, I pray the anointing upon us as the man of God to preach your word. Amen. With your power, with your presence, with your purity, with your purpose. In the name of Jesus, let that unction, that anointing, that fuel come upon me as the man of God. 
that turns a speech into a word from heaven, into a word from God for somebody's life. Hallelujah. God, I pray the anointing in the congregation in every section, front to back, left to right, every man and lady in, in our audience today, Lord, to have an anointing to receive what thus saith the Lord and to receive the working of the Holy Spirit in their life today. In Jesus' name, God bless, and you may be seated. Make no mistake about it. The lamb, this lamb, who overcomes all wickedness, shown to us in the book of Revelation that he shall overcome all of the wickedness and all of the wicked kings. This lamb who overcomes all wickedness. The lamb who overcomes the wicked one in the last of the last days is also the lamb who was slain for our foundation. The one who has power over death. The one who has power over hell. And the one who has power over the grave is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The lamb slain at the foundation of the world is the lamb who will overcome all wickedness at the end of time. He is our Jesus Christ. He is. I want to talk about your Jesus for just a little while. He is the king of kings. I don't believe grammatically that it's an accident. If you will look with me at the scripture. I don't believe that it's an accident that the K referencing Jesus is capitalized. But the K representing all other kings is lowercase. He is the capital case king over all other kings. That is our Jesus Christ. He's the one that is worthy of the capital case king because he's the king of all kings. Would you follow that other statement? He is the Lord of lords. He is the uppercase L Lord of all lowercase L lords. He receives uppercase treatment because he is the Lord of all lords. His kingdom trumps every other kingdom. He has has all dominion and he has all power. That's the Jesus that you and I serve today. That's the Jesus that you and I follow. Could we give our King of Kings and Lord of Lords a hand clap of praise? <laughs> Psalmist said it this way in 145 13 Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom kingdom and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations somebody say with me an everlasting kingdom I don't have to worry which party is in office for this eight year or four year stretch I, I don't have to worry in different parts of the world who's on the throne and what family name is, is in Le no 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 this kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and the dominion of the kingdom of almighty God endureth to all generations. Nebuchadnezzar, powerful king of his day, was exposed to the power and the, the greatness of Almighty God. And when God got through to hit, teaching him a few lessons, he had some things to say about this God. Daniel chapter 4, verse 3. Nebuchadnezzar said, How great are his signs, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. And in chapter 7, 27, he said it this way. He is the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all, notice this, all dominions shall serve and obey him. Not just all individuals, but all dominions, all kings, all lords shall serve and obey him. He is over all. I'm talking about your Jesus. The lamb is the king of kings. The lamb is the lion. The lamb is the Lord over all. His kingdom. An everlasting kingdom of which there will be no end. That's the kingdom that I wish to be a part of. The one that will 
outlive all the kingdoms of our age and of this world. He is Lord of lords. He is King of kings and will forever be the same. But I've come into this house to preach on this Sunday morning. Jesus doesn't desire. Jesus doesn't desire to be the king of kings only. And Jesus does not desire to be the Lord of lords only, but Jesus. And this is what I will preach for the next few minutes under the unction of the Holy Ghost. And I pray the power of the Spirit of God arrest our attention in this room. I pray the anointing of the Holy Ghost walks through the aisles from the front to the back. Amen. I pray the power of angels are in this room. I pray the power of old timers prayers are in this room. I pray old fashioned Holy Ghost anointing and conviction comes in this room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're a guest or a friend in the house today I'm, I'm a kind and a nice man. I may be a little bit firm in the Holy Ghost today because I want every one of us in the house to understand that he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Lords, uh, and he desires to be the king of our life and the Lord of our life. So whether you're the longest standing member of this church or a first time guest, please don't think me mean or harsh, but I am unapologetically going to be firm in message today that Jesus Christ, hear this preacher, Jesus Christ doesn't just want to be king over kings and Lord over lords. But Jesus Christ desires to be the king of your life. And he desires to be the Lord of your life. I don't want to just let him know that he's the king of kings and Lord of lords. I'm in the house today to say, you're my king. You wear the crown. I'll follow you. You're my Lord. I'll worship you. You're my father in heaven. I'm your child on earth. You are my king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, because only you can give that permission. He can be the king of kings, but only you can give the approval and the permission for him to be your king, and for him to be your Lord. There's an old chorus that says, very well, what we minister today. But before I give you the words to that old song, allow me to tell a story behind it that impacted my life. At a senior youth camp, how many of you just come back from senior camp a few weeks ago? Had an awesome, incredible time. I saw you in the altars and praying and commend uh, this church and commend the network and the young people so connected and involved. But at senior, senior youth camp years ago, my late teens, Brother Anthony Mangan was the camp night preacher. He preached powerful messages that led to incredible moves of God. And here I am some 30 plus years later and I can still tell you without having to go check the records and find cassettes, I can still tell you on the first night he preached the masquerade of sin. I can still tell you he preached one night on praise. I can still tell you he preached one night on eternity. And we cried out and we prayed a, a long time in that house as young people. But there was a non-preaching moment that, in, that touched me deeply that I've never forgotten. And I've told my pastor, Brother Anthony, that I still remember this moment. And I re still remember the atmosphere that came in the room. That, that impacted me so strongly. And that was on the very first night of camp. When he stepped to the pulpit and gave very few, a very few uh, brief introductory remarks. And then he said he wanted to start things right. And he wanted to set the stage for what God wanted to do that week. And he led us in an old chorus. And that old chorus was simply this. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and he is Lord every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ 
is Lord. I remember as a teenager, something heavy and anointing settling over that room as a man of God led the congregation of teenagers to sing, He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. It's in moments like these. I wish I could sing. I'd lead us in that old chorus right now. I can't, but she can. Do you know that old chorus? He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen. If you don't know it, somebody will. Let's see if we can sing it. If you know it, sing it with her. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee Very simple chorus, not hard. Now you should know it. Would you close your eyes? Let's sing it together again. Once close your eyes and sing it, simple chorus. Could you lift your hands across this room? He has risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess at you. Jesus Christ is Lord. He kinda ya shando rabba shanda haya. Hallelujah, dear Jesus. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you for giving me for putting that on you spontaneously. Young people, that song's probably so old y'all doesn't even know it. But it's a powerful message. He is Lord. Every knee. Romans 14, 11 and 12. For at is, as it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. God. Brother Bonvillian, this is the word of God that you said would never fade, never lead us astray. And God's eternal word said there's coming a day that every human being is going to kneel before that throne. They're going to bow to Jesus Christ and they're going to confess. Amen. Everyone is going to give a, an account of himself to Almighty God, hear me on this Sunday, one day at that white throne judgment where the souls of all humanity will stand before God from every generation, from every kingdom, from every region of the world, leaders, kings, tyrants, amen, and to the very common person and all points in between will kneel before God and confess that Jesus Christ Christ is Lord. But I have something to say on this day. I've chosen not to wait until that day to worship him as king. I've chosen not to wait to that day to make my confession. I've chosen to yield my life. I've chosen to yield my mind. I've chosen to yield my heart. I've chosen, somebody help me preach this morning. I've chosen to yield my thoughts. I've chosen to yield my emotions. I've chosen to yield my ways, my choices, and my behaviors to Almighty God. I decided to dedicate all that I am to serving Him now. I'm not going to wait till it's a forced bow. I bow now. I'm not going to wait till it's forced worship. I worship now. I tell Him on this Sunday, You are Lord. You're my Lord. Come on, somebody, from the front row to the back. You're not just Lord. Lord, you're my Lord. Uh, you're not just king. You're my king. Uh, I honor you. Uh, 
Uh, somebody throw your hands into heaven and just say, he's my king. Uh, he's my Lord. Uh, he's my king. I worship my Jesus. I'm not going to wait until it's forced. I'm not going to wait until it's the line at the white throne judgment Well, every knee has to bow. And we surrender to him now. Notice from our text, 14 of Revelation 17. The Bible says, we read this already, but I want to reemphasize that there are kings in the previous verses. They're making war with the lamb, and the lamb's going to overcome them. He's the king, Lord of lords and king of kings. Now notice what it says about the people who are with God. These are the people who have been God's people. They've been raptured. Now they're in the, the Lord's army. Notice what it says in describing them. Those with the Lord. They are the called and chosen and faithful. I want to be in that army. Allow me to just say it for a moment. I want to be riding on one of those big white horses. Hallelujah. I want to be a part of the group. I've decided since I want to be with him then, I'm going to walk with him now. Since I want to ride with King Jesus then, I'm going to ride with King Jesus now. They that are with him are the called and chosen and faithful. Now, does anybody remember what Matthew twenty two fourteen says? Many are, think through this with me for a moment. Many are called, but few are chosen. So if that's the progression, if many are called and few are chosen, if it's, is it possible out of those chosen, even fewer Remain faithful. Just something for us to consider that those who ride with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, it doesn't just simply say they are the called because there are many that are called that do not respond. It doesn't just go on to say they that ride with him are called and chosen because chosen means you've responded to the call and God has said, I choose you, I want to use you, but it adds a third dimension. They are called and chosen and faithful I preach to you across this congregation keep on being faithful to the lordship of Jesus Christ in your life keep on serving him in your journey they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful man I speak for just a moment in this message to the heart of this church remain faithful Every day, every week, every month, every year, even decade by decade. If I come back to the house of God next year and the Lord tarries, I pray to see you here being faithful, faithful to God's house, faithful to prayer, faithful to the things of God, living out your choice that Jesus, Jesus is the supreme Lord in your life. I recently read an article that was asking if modern churches are too modern. Let me say that again. I read an article questioning if modern churches were too modern. And one of the points touched me deeply. And it said if Jesus is only talked about as your friend and Savior, but never referenced as the Lord of your life, then your church is just too modern. Amen. Now, is Jesus our friend? Absolutely. Jesus is our friend. Is Jesus our Savior? Absolutely. Jesus is our Savior. But if I only reference him as your friend and as your Savior, then I do you an injustice. I'm here for a few moments to preach, to speak the words of the Lord, that Jesus Christ is to be the Lord of your life. Old statement worth repeating. 
Christ. Now this is a little heavy. Christ is Lord of all. Or he is not Lord at all. Would you consider that with me for a minute? Would you say that with me? Christ is Lord of all. Or he is not Lord at all. Old chorus. Jesus. I won't make you sing this one. Relax. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all the kingdoms of my heart. I guess I only fooled myself for I said I've yielded all but in a secret corner of my heart was a kingdom that didn't fall. I surrender now. Make my heart your throne. Somebody's going to get renewed in the Holy Ghost today. Somebody's going to have a breakthrough today. Somebody's going to surrender the kingdoms of your heart. To I speak this from the front row to the back. Somebody's going to surrender. Here I am, Jesus. I give my marriage back to you. I give my kids. I, I give my life to you. I give my home to you. Do it. Work, work, work. I give me. Come on, some. I, I surrender. I surrender now. Make my heart your throne. Rule its kingdoms great and small. For if you're not Lord of everything, then you're not Lord at all. Jesus, I surrender all. Jesus, I surrender all the kingdoms of my heart. Jesus, be the Lord of all. If that's how you feel one more time, would you slip your hands to the heavens? Slip your heart to the Lord right now, Jesus. I give you the kingdoms of my heart. Hallelujah. If there's any corner of my heart, amen. Is there any corner of my life? As the song said, if there are any secret corners of my heart and any kingdoms that haven't fell, I take the crown off. You wear the crown. You're the king, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 For if you're not Lord of everything, then you're not Lord at all. Remember, Jesus is our friend. Jesus is our healer. Jesus is our deliverer. But may I encourage you, he desires to be the Lord of all. Will you say it with me, of all? Of all your life. He is sovereign. He is master. I read one time an article that made a kind of a bold statement, but it sure caught my attention. Expounded on it, but I just want to give you the statement. And that statement is this. Jesus ain't your boyfriend. Brother Jathan, when I was reading that, I ain't going to lie, that jumped out of my attention. Jesus ain't my boyfriend. But the point was, is some of modern Christianity presents relationship with Jesus in such a fluffy manner that all he can do is be our friend. And all we can talk about is the easy parts of Christianity. And that writer was saying, I just got to tell you something. Jesus ain't your boyfriend. He's your king. He's your Lord. Yes, he's our friend. Yes, he's our deliverer. Yes, he's our healer. But can I tell you, he's our king. He is our Lord. He wants to be Lord of all the kingdoms of our life. He wants to be Lord of all the kingdoms of our heart. He is our everything. Hallelujah. He is. So who who wears the crown? Who has the final say? Our purpose today very simple. Just to encourage every human being one more time before we leave these doors to affirm the lordship of Jesus Christ in our life. I'm not here to meddle, but as I was praying over the last couple of days, thoughts just come through my mind. Is he lord of my cell phone? Is he lord of my music? Is he lord of my wallet? Is he lord of my relationships? 
Is he Lord of the language that comes out of my mouth? Is he Lord of the language that I let and the things that I let touch my eardrums? I hope I'm not meddling too much. Amen. I'm just telling you, when Jesus gets up in your life, it's not just two hours on a Sunday. Jesus wants to be Lord of your life. He wants relationship with your life. He wants to make an impact in what comes in your eye gate, what comes in your ears, what comes in your spirit, what comes in your heart. Jesus Christ. Paul gave us a beautiful process. He shared in Philippians chapter 3 that I believe is an example of the lordship of Jesus Christ. He said in Philippians 3 verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. He said, I was willing to lose. Notice what he goes on to say in verse 8. Doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Man, I'm talking to somebody today. I'm, I'm not here to tell you Jesus come to take everything. No, no, no. I'm just telling you we come to surrender everything to Jesus. And, and, and if some things end up by the wayside, I'm okay with that if I have Jesus and the lordship and the power of Jesus in my life. And he said, I'm willing to count everything but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. And Paul said, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. I pray over the next few moments as I close that people in this room would have that last phrase in your spirit. I'm going to win Christ. I'm going to have Holy Ghost power in my life. I'm going to have the power and authority of Jesus in my life. I don't care what it costs me. I don't care what price I may ever have to pay. It'll be worth it to have Jesus as my king. And Jesus, come on, give him a hand clap of praise as my Lord. Hallelujah. I gain. Hallelujah. We gain the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Then in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, I want to read it in another version. He said, listen what Paul said. I just read it, but another version. More than that, I now regard all things as liabilities. I regard, this is the apostle, I regard all things as liabilities compared to the far greater value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Everything else becomes a liability that I just want to know Jesus Christ, my Lord. What do you gain when you search and seek after Jesus Christ? You gain the excellency of the knowledge and the power of Christ Jesus, your Lord. Hallelujah. I come to a close. Would you stand with me across this room today? Just felt to minister from our heart for just a few moments to every person, and as I've said, every home unit, a lot of home units, if we counted every single home unit represented, from all across this community. it's a lot of home units and individuals represented in this room. But I believe to every person in this room, as we affirm again on this Sunday, the kingship and the lordship and the supremacy of Jesus Christ, that there's an anointing and a presence and a power that is about to come into this room. Would you close your eyes with me if you would do that across this house? Amen. Would you lift your hands to the Lord? Hallelujah. When Jesus called the apostles, when Jesus called the apostles, the Bible says they left their boats and they left their nets. Your eyes are closed. Your hands are lifted. They left their boats and they left their nets and they followed Jesus listen to me I know I have your hands up and your eyes closed but listen when Jesus called the apostles he didn't ask for one altar call 
He didn't ask for a week of their time. Sister Marcelli, he didn't ask for a summer. Summer internship is a good thing. I've seen it influence a lot of people in different fields and even in ministry. But Jesus didn't look at those people. Say, would you give me a summer? He didn't say, would you give me one real good altar call? He didn't say, would, would, you, give me, would you give me one year to work on you? When Jesus called him, he said, would you give me all of you for the rest of your life? And if you will, I'll show you so much anointing and power and covenant. There's a preciousness in this room right now. Jesus is not asking, and I don't mean to be crude, but he's not asking for a one-day stand. He's not asking for a summer internship. Jesus walks these aisles and just simply says, will you make me your king? Would you make me Lord over all of your life? He asked for the rest of their lives. But when they left their nets and their boats, it wasn't just an aimless journey. They left to follow Jesus. And Jesus said, when you follow me, I will shape you and create you to be everything that I see that you can become. Now again, would you lift your hands across this room and in your own words, would you surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ? your home, your life, ministry, those with a calling, your calling, your future, your steps, your journey. I surrender. You're my King, Jesus. You're my Lord, and I honor you. There's somebody in this room that's surrendering some corners of your heart to Jesus, and God's going to give you a breakthrough. You're surrendering something to the altar, and God's going to give you a renewal today. You're yielding to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Would you tell him before we come forward in your own words, you're the king of kings, you're the lord of lords, but I'm letting you know you're mine. You're my king. You're my lord. You're my Savior. You're God over my home. You're God over my steps. You're God over my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's a sweet heaviness of the Holy Ghost in this room, and I'm going to ask you something. I'm going to ask you not to stop and do a lot of talking. Let's don't, let's don't let any distraction come in right now. I'm actually feeling just to ask you to come and stand quietly. Just come and stand. Everyone that will come from across this room. There's a soberness of the presence of the Lord. I'm going to speak it again. Somebody's about to get a breakthrough into a renewal because you're just going to surrender. God, if I've tried to take it back in my own hands, I surrender. The corners, the crevices of my heart, the kingdoms, I give it, I give it to you. Your Lord, your Lord of my job, your Lord of my family, your Lord of my schooling, your Lord of my future, your Lord, your Lord of my relationships, your Lord. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that you're at the front, would you close your eyes and just let a prayer come out? You can be a little louder now. I just want us to, there's a sweetness. There's a sweetness and a soberness, kind of a heaviness of the Spirit of the Lord. I surrender my family to you, Jesus. I surrender. You, 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 you label, you fill in the blank. I surrender. I surrender my steps. You're King. You're Lord. You're my King. And you're my Lord. In Jesus' holy name, I surrender my time, my pocketbook, my entertainment, the steps of my life. I'm just surrendering myself to you because you are my Jesus. and You are my Lord right now. Don't be in a hurry right now. 
Don't be in a hurry right now. Don't be in a hurry right now. Come on, somebody, let that cry. Let that prayer come out. Somebody's affirming the Lordship. You're my Lord, Jesus. Don't be afraid. Let that cry come out right now. Let that prayer come out right now. I'm telling you, Jesus is doing something beautiful in here right now. Hallelujah, It's a little quieter and a little, little, little mellow for Sunday evening altar service. I understand that. But there's a depth the Holy Ghost is going to right now across this room. God's doing God's Let it happen. Let it happen right now. That's it. Husbands, fathers, there's some, some heaviness of the spirit settling on you. Moms, there's some heaviness right now. It's a God thing. It's okay. I give you our family. I give you my life. I give you my children. I give you my life. Let that cry come out, man. That's beautiful. church i'm releasing you to let that cry that let that prayer come out there's holy tears all over this room and you can stand on that platform and there's holy tears all the way from right to the left in every segment i'm asking you let the cry come out let that prayer come out let some words come out he's lord of your present tense he's lord of your future he's lord give him lordship of the rooms and the kingdoms of your life right now there's holy tears flowing all over this room there's holy commitments being made all over this room. There are God moments happening all over this room right now. If you're here and you need that breakthrough, would you lift your hands to the heavens right now? Amen. If you need renewing in the Holy Ghost, would you lift your hands to the Spirit of God right now? Jesus, touch our friends right now, Lord, with your Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, Lord, with the consecration of the Spirit of the living God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. That's it. That's precious. Hallelujah, dear Jesus. I affirm the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I said, I see couples holding hands. I see families connecting right now. We're affirming the Lordship of Jesus Christ in our home. We're affirming the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Young people, young adults here to my left, amen, just close your eyes and lift your hands. I know we've consecrated all through the camp season, but would you affirm to Jesus one more time, your Lord, your Lord of my life, your Lord of my steps, your Lord of my journey. There's some God moments happening in this room. I see it. You can just see it. There's some God moments happening in this house right now. Amen. Praying men and ladies, if God releases you to connect with somebody in your circle around you, please do so. There's ministry in this room right now. There's couples being strengthened and renewed in the Holy Ghost. There's men and ladies being touched by the power of God. God, 
God, we love you, Jesus. Your Lord, you're my Lord, you're my King, you wear the crown. Come on, that's it. Those of you praying in the pews, I'm watching it happen. Hallelujah. Those of you praying in the altar, it's just that tenderness, the heaviness of the Holy Ghost, the power of Almighty God. You can be renewed. You can be renewed in your spirit right now. God's doing something in some couples right now. Cry out to God.
Praise the Lord, everybody. DJ's come to the Lord, and he's letting the Lord have lordship through obedience to the Word of God, his obedience to be baptized. So I encourage you, if you're in the house of God and you've never experienced water baptism and submission to God through water baptism, we have water and we have things prepared for you. DJ, after repenting of your sin and receiving the Holy Ghost, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for remission of your sin. Don't forget tomorrow night, be here for revival tomorrow night. Those of you praying, keep praying as long as you want. Even breakthroughs are happening in the house. Man, tomorrow night, God's already leading us in a direction, believing the Holy Ghost will meet with us. And God bless.